In other videos, what I and my colleagues have attempted to do is to demonstrate how easy and yet powerful it is to be able to drag files and import files from mobile devices, for example, a GPS receiver or a file you find on the internet that contains latitude and longitude coordinates such as water wells or pH values or uh, locations of uh, historical buildings or earthquake epicenters into ArcGIS online. And so consider this video as part of that series. In the first video in this series, what I covered was how do I open up and then map a thematic map, in this case of Oklahoma counties from 1900 to 2010, inside ArcGIS Explorer Online. What we covered was how to import a zipped shapefile onto ArcGIS Explorer Online. Now that it's up there though, in this video I'd like to cover some additional functions that you can easily do inside ArcGIS Explorer Online. So once we're there, we're going to type in Oklahoma owner J.J. Kursky. I know it's there because I saved it there and made it public so that you and anybody else can go ahead and examine it. The one that I want is this 1900 to 2010 Oklahoma by county population thematically mapped with 1930 population. That's the one I want to open. So I'm going to go ahead and underneath the thumbnail image open an explorer online. Here's my map with the legend. What I'm mapping right now is the 1930 population. That's what these figures represent right here, by county across the state. Okay, so we've seen how we can click on counties and get the historical data. This is like pulling up the I part of GIS, the information table. So Woodward County, for example, got 7,000 people in 1900, going up to 14 or 15,000 people, then sort of plateauing out, a peak in 1980, and then a, a bit of a decline since then, with another rise between 2000 and 2010. And we can do that with every, any county. Okay, so we have the G part of GIS, which is the map. The I part of GIS, which is the information behind the map. But there's a lot more we can do with this. In the last video, I showed how you can easily change this legend so that you're not just mapping 1930 population, but you're also mapping 1940, 1950, and other years. And remember, think outside the box here, folks. Don't just think that you can do this with population data. This could be any kind of data, biomes, pH and streams, it could be economics by country, it could be neighborhood, median age in your community, whatever. In this video I'm going to show some additional functionality beyond thematically mapping, changing your number of classifications, and changing the colors. There's a lot more you can do with this tool called ArcGIS Explorer Online. Another thing we can do is we can use this little dashboard widget we set up a dashboard widget and we go to the dashboard and we can add a gadget. Okay, what kind of gadget might I want? I'm going to compare population data, so I think a, a column chart might be good. Okay, and we're going to call it, how about 1930 versus 1940? Okay, great. So I can look at the effects of the Dust Bowl. Uh, how about let's look at 1950 as well, because then I want to see if any counties were able to bounce back quickly from the impacts of the Dust Bowl. So 1930, 1940, and 1950, I'm going to map. And uh, OK, I'm good with that. So now, excellent. Well, that didn't take long at all. Let's go ahead and reduce this so you can see what I'm seeing. OK, so I've selected this particular county. Oh, you know what? I also need to add the county name in there. So let's go ahead and do that. Well, that's easily done. Now I'm back editing my column chart widget. And my name field, I really want that county name to appear. So let's go ahead and select that. Great. And you know what? I'm not really wild about that color. So let's go ahead and change that slightly. OK, great. OK, super. Now. Now I can select different counties, and I can see how they changed. And there is Ellis County, Roger Mills County. Looks like they all keep, 
kept decreasing 1930, 1940, 1950. So it wasn't just in the 30s. What about over here in central Oklahoma? Let's let's just go ahead and take a look at how about Oklahoma City? Ah, Oklahoma County, which is where Oklahoma City is located, uh, increased. So a lot of those folks that left the farms and fields moved to Oklahoma City and to Tulsa. Yep. What about some of these other counties here? Okay, Pittsburgh County saw a decrease. Atoka County, Marshall County. Looks like a lot of them experienced. Comanche County have an increase all three decades. I wonder if there's any county that actually decreased and then saw an increase in the 1940s. It doesn't look like any of them so far. Ah, here, here's one of them, K County. Looks like in 1930 it had 50,000 people. In 1940 it had 47,000 people. And then in 1950 it went up to 48,8. Uh, although it had not uh, regained its 1930 population by 1950. Let's go ahead and take a closer look there and go ahead and pop that up. All right, so we're looking at K County. There's the 50,000 in 1930, going down to 47,000 in 1940, 40, dipping up or regaining a bit in 1950. By 1960, it had regained what it lost, but look, after 1960, it actually saw some decrease, which continues up to the present day. There's lots of factors in these population uh, changes, aren't there? Right? There's uh, urban urbanization, there's rural depopulation, not just from the Dust Bowl, but throughout uh, the High Plains and uh, throughout the Midwest as and in other agric agricultural areas of the country where you've got agribusiness, smaller uh, numbers of people on the landscape, larger farm sizes. Also, you've got um, regional and national trends going on with a migration to the west and the south and one could argue that Oklahoma is seeing some of the southerly uh, in migration but there's lots going on uh, economics perception and uh, lots more okay let's summarize what we've done here we started with a shape file. We compressed it into a zip format so it contained not, this, this, not just the shape file but uh, other files that are associated with the shape file, the DBF, the SHX, the SBN, and so on. We dragged it over to ArcGIS Explorer Online. That was the first thing we did. Second thing we did was we looked at the data behind the scenes in these pop-ups. And then what we did was we made these dashboards right here. In this case, we made a nice three-column uh, chart so that we could easily compare as we panned around the state. We also uh, created a thematic map based on an attribute. In this case, what we're mapping is the 2010 census data. Let's say we don't want the 2010. Let's say we want the 1930 population. And let's say we don't want equal interval, but we want, once again, a quantile. Okay, there's a quantile map of the 1930 population. Done. And now we're mapping 1930 population. So you can see a lot more over here than we, than we saw in 2010. So we've done some easy but yet pretty powerful things that allow us to analyze the pattern, in this case, population. But remember, you've got other data that you're probably interested in, and it may or may not include population. So you can go ahead and do the same kinds of things inside ArcGIS Explorer Online that I did here with the Oklahoma population. Thanks! One more thing here is I, I really want to save this. So I'm going to go ahead and save as. I'm going to sign into my S3 global account. Then I'm going to go ahead and save this map. I put some tags in there so I and others will be able to find it later. I go ahead and say save. My map is saved. One more thing to do and that is to change the thumbnail image. Let's go to details and let's share that with everyone. And let's also go to description. 
I'm going to browse now to my folder where I've saved that little thumbnail so it gives me a better idea of what this actually looks like. So I'm happy with that now. Okay, now the big test. If I go to arcgis.com and I search for 2010 Oklahoma. I've got a Oklahoma 1900 to 2010 population change, but look, here's the one I just created. 1900 to 2010 Oklahoma by county population thematically mapped with 1930 population. If I go ahead and open in Explorer Online, okay, it opened up. There's my, there's my map. And I've got all that data that I just worked on. Wonderful. Now, you go out and do something similar and share that with others. Thanks.